Hey guys, Alex with Dave and Krista here, and today we're going to talk about creating subdomains. Um, so if you're unfamiliar with what a subdomain is, you've probably seen it, just don't know what it's called. Um, but a subdomain is something like um, if you have a photography website, for instance, and um, you wanted to put your pricing on your website, but didn't want it to be uh, directly accessible from your regular website. I'll show you what I mean. So like if uh, you had my photography So if that was your domain, if you wanted to do something like have your pricing on your website and go, that would be a subdomain. So setting this up, pricing.myphotography.com. Pricing is the subdomain. So you'd have, again, just your regular website there, and we'd be creating a new website associated with that domain with just pricing on it. So. Um, you know, it's very popular to do this or, you know, yes, you could just create a new page um, and do something like that, but it would show up in your sitemap and you would just have to know how to uh, kind of turn that page off so people don't just directly uh, get access to it from Googling. Um, you know, it's just a preference thing, but uh, it is very popular just to set up a new subdomain uh, and do something like that with pricing or something like that and uh, do it that way. So I'm gonna show you guys that method today with two of the kind of more popular entry-level hosting providers. Okay, so here we are on Bluehost. Um, and I'm, I'm doing Bluehost again because this is just a very popular provider. I'm not a huge fan of Bluehost, but I know a lot of you guys are. So um, it'll work for the sake of this, this uh, scenario here. Um, and, and I'm gonna go over SiteGround here in a minute, um, but they're both uh, pretty much all hosting providers are almost identical um, in, in the way of doing this. Now, some of them are a little bit more triggered than others. Some of them do not allow subdomains. So you just want to like know some of that. But most providers, they do allow them, and um, they're pretty, pretty similar to how you install them. It just might be in a different menu or something like that. So here we are on Bluehost, um, and you're going to go under Domains and Subdomains. Then once, once you are under uh, subdomains, you're going to type in whatever you want. Uh, you can tell I've done these before. Um, you're going to type in whatever you want that subdomain to be. So in my case, I'm just going to type in Alex. Um, and again, you're not typing in Alex dot whatever the full domain is. It's already going to do that for you. So, you know, I'm just typing in just Alex. And then um, if you have multiple domains here, you're going to want to make sure that you um, select the right one. So it creates all the proper um, settings for that domain. So this is the only one on this account, but if you had others, you'd want to select that. And then you're just going to click create. Okay, so what that just did is it set up all of the DNS settings, the backend settings for the domain to map everything correctly. Uh, you can do this a manual way, but why do it the hard way when you have this subdomains tool to do it for you? So that set up everything correctly. Once you get done with that, um, you're going to want to go to your cPanel. Um, most hosting providers use cPanel. Uh, sometimes they do call it something different, like uh, in Bluehost, they call it advanced, uh, but it's just cPanel. So we're going to go over here. Now, once we are in our cPanel, we are going to find what's called Softaculous. Softaculous is this fantastic tool that installs WordPress um, and other um, platforms for you. And we're gonna we're gonna use that one. So uh, we're gonna click install. We are going to select that subdomain. So you should see that here. If you don't, that probably means something went wrong. Um, but you should see that there. Uh, I did not set up an SSL for this, so I'm gonna uh, change that over. And um, you know that would be a good time if you wanted to add an SSL, which I highly recommend um, to go ahead and set that up. That's a different video though. So uh, so for the sake of this, I'm not going to select that. I'm just going to select my subdomain and you're going to set up the settings for your website that you're about to create. So again, the subdomain is a whole new website. You'll still need to log in and you know, updated or whatever. It is different from your main website, which is the purpose of this subdomain. Um, it won't be, you, you can completely blacklist this um, domain if you wanted to, to make it where it doesn't show up in Google or anything like that. You could do that, um, which is the cool thing about doing this. And you don't have to worry about doing that on your main website or your pricing showing up in like a Google listing or something like that. So, uh, 
these are all settings that you can change later in the uh, WordPress settings, but you may as well, you know, set them up here. So type in your, your site name, um, whatever. And uh, don't worry about multi-site. That is a video for another day. You don't need to worry about that. Um, you will definitely want to update these uh, passwords and usernames. Do not use this. Um, but for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to use this because I'm going to delete this install right after we get done. Uh, English, obviously, that's our preferred language. And, um, you know, plugins, if you use any of these, you're more than welcome to go ahead and install those. Again, you can install those later. Um, and then we're just going to click install. Now, this may take just a few minutes and ooh, it's already done, actually. So, um, so you should be able to click here and um, your subdomain already be done. And one thing to remember, once this is done, um, if you create this really fast, um, sometimes it won't have time to what's called propagate. And that just means kind of set itself up, um, let uh, all the domain stuff uh, catch up with the internet and kind of just work, I guess, essentially. So sometimes if you do this process really fast, like I just did, um, the domain, when you click here, it might not work yet. Um, so usually a good rule of method is if you create a subdomain or do really anything with domains, um, technically it can take up to uh, 24 hours to kind of sort its way out. Usually it takes about two to four minutes. So um, sometimes if it didn't work and you click this and it shows some kind of crazy screen or not loading or 404 or some sort of error, uh, just give it a few minutes. And uh, usually that'll sort itself out. So, um, so I've clicked here and logged in with that amazing username and password. And here we are. We are in alex.kristenedwards.com. We have a whole new website that we can create our pricing page um, and do really anything we want on that's not associated with the main domain. So this, like I said, this is a really great tool for setting up um, pricing pages or um, guides or just anything that's... Um, you don't, you know, you can kind of separate out from your main website. It's really cool. And it's really simple to do. A lot of people think it's a lot more complicated than what it is, but it's not. So um, real quick, I'm going to show you guys um, the same process on SiteGround. And again, it's um, almost the same, if not a little bit more simple. Um, so you will log into your SiteGround account and then go to cPanel. And we're gonna just type in this find bar, we're gonna go subdomains. And there you go, there it is. It's not even in any other menus. So what we're gonna do there is we're just gonna type in Alex and then we're gonna click create. Boom, done, wonderful. And the really good thing about SiteGround is they are fantastic with uh, creating um, uh, SSL so we could even go right here and click look, let's encrypt let's just do that while we're here just for the fun of it so we can go ahead and add an SSL boom we'll let that run you can tell I've done this a few times before and then we're gonna go back and find Softaculous same thing same spot even um, so we're gonna click Softaculous and then we're gonna install WordPress and then this screen is going to look identical. We're gonna find my subdomain. Uh, we have the SSL installed, so we can do HTTPS this time. Oh, look at that. SiteGround gives you a more secure password. Uh, but everything else is the same. Remember the, all this stuff, guys, just from just a few minutes ago? Um, and then I'm not gonna do it again, but you're just gonna click install. It's the same exact process. Um, SiteGround might be a little quicker, but again, the process is pretty close to the same. So um, that's my tips for you guys for creating a subdomain. Again, you're gonna wanna make sure that you actually manage that website just like you do your main website. They're two completely different. So you're gonna wanna make sure you still update plugins or if you have a contact form or something like that on that page, you're gonna wanna make sure that you still um, check in on that website and treat it just like your full website because it's essentially the same thing. So. Just keep track of that and hopefully this helped.